Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome California's leader for environmental protection. Linda Adams was a lead negotiator for California's Global Warming Solutions Act and is a tireless champion for curbing climate change. On behalf of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, she has tirelessly led California's most important environmental policies and is now working closely with states, provinces, and countries around the world to develop a network of climate initiatives to achieve the greatest global reductions. Please give a warm welcome for California's Secretary for Environmental Protection, Linda Adams. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests from, the, from around the world. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Governor's Global Climate Summit. I would like to uh, introduce, take a minute to introduce some of our state elected officials who are here with us today. We are very pleased that Senator Alan Lowenthal is with us. Um, all, all of these officials have been leaders in environmental efforts. We have Senator-elect Fran Pavley, who has authored, <laughs> co-author of AB 32. I believe Senator Dean Flores may be with us later today. Uh, Speaker Fabian Nunez, uh, Speaker Emeritus uh, Nunez, was the, also the co-author of Assembly Bill 32. And last but not least, Assemblyman Sam Blakesley is with us this morning. So thank you all for being here. The significance of this summit and of the leaders participating cannot be overstated. This event complements the international climate talks focusing on real, tangible, economic, and environmental opportunities that result from measuring and curbing greenhouse gas pollution. The states, provinces, and other governmental governmental entities represented here contribute the large majority of the world's emissions. Together, we can find sustainable and cooperative actions to combat global warming while growing our economies. I'm pleased to see so many of us demanding action on the most daunting environmental challenge of our time. It is these grassroots efforts from states and provinces that are developing practical solutions to support national and international efforts. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce our fearless leader of this great state of California and a world leader in environmental protection, ladies and gentlemen, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Linda, for the wonderful introduction and also for the extraordinary job that you're doing uh, for the EPA. And I want to thank, of course, your entire team also for helping us put this conference together. And I want to say uh, thank you also to some other people here because this is really extraordinary and it takes a lot of work to pull this together. I want to thank uh, Secretary Mike Chrisman and everyone at Resources Agency. Let's give them a big hand for the great work that they have done. And then, of course, Terry Tamanen and Bonnie Rees. I want to thank them not only for putting together this conference, but I also want to thank them for being such great advisors for the last five years since I've become governor. I couldn't have done it without them, so a big, big thank you to them both. And then also Will Fox, my deputy chief of staff, I want to thank him also for the great work that he has done. And then Carl Bendix, uh, who is, of course, the great visionary and creates the stage setting and provides the food and everything. And all of our terrific sponsors, we want to say, I thank especially His Royal Highness, the Aga Khan, for his great contribution to this uh, conference. And then our co-hosts, uh, the governors, I'm talking about Governor Christ, 
of Florida and Governor Blagojevich of Illinois and Governor Sebelius of Kansas and Governor Doyle of Wisconsin. Let's give them also a big uh, round of applause. And then, of course, I want to thank my wife and the greatest first lady, Maria Schreiber, who is sitting right out here for his great partnership and being such a great first lady. I'm telling you, talking about running a house environmentally sound, she's like the Gestapo in our house when it comes to the environment. It is fantastic to see that the way she educates those kids and makes them also environmentalists. I, I love that. But anyway, it is great, and I want to say, uh, you know, thank you all for coming here today. I want to welcome you all to the uh, Governor's Global Climate Summit. This is a historic summit, I would say, and uh, this is really amazing for me because, uh, you know, we had visions about something like that uh, five years ago, but we had no idea if we ever can get those visions to become a reality, and I think that those visions are becoming more and more a reality. And, of course, it was very difficult in the beginning. You can imagine five years ago when we talked about that, yes, you can protect the environment and you can protect the economy at the same time. There were a lot of doubters out there. There was a lot of cynics, a lot of people that didn't believe that. And, of course, we fought all the way through, and we, of course, knew that we were on the right track. And that's why, even though there was tremendous resistance in the beginning, we moved forward with our tailpipe emission standards and with our green building initiative, with our one million solar initiative, also building the hydrogen highway and the low carbon fuel standards and all of those various different things. And of course, there were, like I said, people that didn't believe in it and they thought that we're going to hurt the economy. I still have friends in the business world that come to me and say that this, this is going to hurt the economy. But, of course, we believe very strongly that this is going to hurt the economy, I mean, help the economy. Uh, and I, I tell you, when we talk about, uh, you know, facing obstacles, we also have faced uh, obstacles uh, on the federal level with the federal government. And, uh, you know, they were as enthusiastic, especially when we passed AB 32 uh, to make a commitment to lower our greenhouse gas emissions. They were as enthusiastic about that than people were seeing my first movie, Hercules in New York, um, <laughs> which is a movie that went right in the toilet just to show of what the great enthusiasm was there. Yeah. But uh, the bottom line is, is uh, that uh, I'm excited about the report, however, that in January all of this would change because now there's a new administration coming in and uh, I will not talk much more about that, but this new administration is very much interested in adopting the same kind of regulations that we have adopted here in California, but I will uh, get to that uh, later on. Uh, but in September of 2006, let me tell you, when I signed the nation's first law to cap greenhouse gas emissions, California was leading a revolution but without any soldiers. Uh, we were out there alone, and uh, there was no other state in the United States that was doing anything similar to that. Uh, but we are used to that in California because we're leading the way in so many other areas. If it is in entertainment, music, if it is in stem cell research with our university system, if it is biotechnology, green technology, um, nanotechnology, and all of those things, we're leading the way. And so we also felt very comfortable in leading the way environmentally and flexing our muscles. And uh, so we moved forward and we created partnerships because, like I said, there was a lack of uh, inner cooperation from the federal side. So we started going out forming partnerships uh, with the western states and partnerships with the northeastern states, southern states, and also with Mexico, with provinces in Canada, and also with European nations. And these were really great partnerships with cap and trade. And right here today is an example of how we evolved. And now we see all of this, you know, officials from China here today, from India, from Mexico, from Brazil, from Indonesia, Great Britain, and the list goes on and on from uh, around the world. And in the same summit, working together to achieve the same goals. So this is really huge of how far we have come here. And I know that all of you realize, of course, that we are here today to work very hard this next two days and not to just uh, have an excuse to enjoy the California sunshine and to maybe do some surfing and go to Disneyland and all of those things, but we're going to work hard. We're gonna, because it's very important that we work hard. It's important that we push the envelope, and it's important also that we reach for the stars here. We will have important discussions here on everything from curbing deforestation to making sure that developing nations and the developed nations are all working together for the mutual beneficial outcomes. That is what we're here for. And when we sign our summit declaration at the wrap-up tomorrow afternoon, 
Uh, that framework will help the negotiators next month in Poland and next year in Denmark, uh, which, where they draft uh, the sequel to the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, so, yes, our revolution now does have soldiers, and it's spreading around the globe, and I'm very happy about that. And I want to say thank you to everyone here for coming here and for uh, those also that are still on their way to come here today. This is going to be hard work that needs to be done, and a lot of important panels need to be heard from, and a lot of agreements that need to be signed. So let's roll up our sleeves and let's get to work. And again, a big thank you.